Hello and welcome to Spirit Sherpa, the show that helps and encourages you on your journey to unlock your magic mojo. I'm Jules, your co-host. If you're new to this type of work, please start with Episode 1. If you're an intermediate student, you can start with Episode 98. And advanced students, go ahead and fast forward to Episode 200. With me, as always, to share her insights and her wisdom and party like it's the end of the year, because it is, because this airs on New Year's Eve, is the spirit doctor herself, Kelly Sparta. WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Your last name is Sparta. It just is, saying. It is, it is, and I would take them. You know, <laughs> we uh, we watched that movie, the the three hundred, with like oh, like yeah. the the Sparta dudes, and I'm like, yeah, that was nice. They <laughs> they they whoop some ass in that movie. That's all I got to say. Oh, yeah. That was brilliant. Behind the scenes on that, and how many hours they had to 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 train every single day to look like that. I was not do that. I was like. Okay, no, thank you. There's a reason yeah. I did not go into acting. Yes. Yeah, but that was some nice eye candy. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. I was like, mm-hmm. 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 yeah. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it just means everybody looks at me and goes, "I am Sparta." <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> everyone. Right. Everyone. I mean, fucking everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and that's self-inflicted. <laughs> So it is. It so is because you know that I took this name, but you know, at yeah, time, that's where I was. It works. So and it's still fine. So absolutely. So what what are you doing partying in like you know down in Panama for New Year's? What well, what y'all got going? So um, I I haven't I haven't signed up for it yet, which means I may or may not make it. <laughs> We record these in advance, so it's it's actually the 14th of December as we're recording this, um, but there's always a New Year's Eve party that the Rotary Club throws, and uh, they often, you know, dress in costumes and things like that, and so, you know, they do this, you know, high fashion sort of thing, and so um, last year, I was doing psychic readings for it, but this year, they're holding it in a different venue, and it is way too loud to even remotely consider doing psychic readings. So I'll probably just go and dance my butt off. Oh, that'd be fun. I love to dance. Where, oh, yeah, me too. Me too. That was I way know fun. You know you do. You, you yes. are like the queen of dance, man. You you have like awards and shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He does. Well, I've been, him. yeah, well, I've been dancing since I was like, I don't know, three. Okay, Did jazz, don't, tap, hip hop. Don't, don't give us like the 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 justification for the award tell us about your awards toot your home oh oh i will toot toot (laughs) so no um i've been a competitive dancer most of my life so i did jazz tap and hip-hop competed with those you know one different little things um depending on you know that was way back when so honestly i don't remember what it was um and then um in adult life i do west coast swing and hustle um and a little bit of social ballroom you know um waltz cha-cha stuff like that and so um i'm intermediate dancer in west coast swing and you know won a few awards there and did a few routines in hustle with my pro uh hustle dancing with my pro and won a few first place on that one so cool. that was way fun yeah see yeah she's rocking she's rolling she's cooking with absolutely you, baby. absolutely <laughs> I was 95 pounds dripping wet, and he would, like, throw me up in the air and stuff. So that was way fun. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. The, the things that we do behind the scenes here is that I, I watch TikToks <laughs> that I find that are dancers, and then I send them to Jewel on, on Voxer, and I'm like, look at this. Look at this. And she's like, oh, my God, I love them. And I'm like, of course you know them. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's Jordan and Tatiana. I got it. Yeah. Oh, that's Jen DeLuca. Yeah, I know them. <laughs> Later. Yeah. But this Way is fun. what we do in our back behind the scenes days. Yes. That nobody Way fun. About. This is this is our little <laughs> secret thing. Well, they do now. They do now because you know <laughs> I can't keep my mouth shut. We know that. I, I have zero sense of privacy <laughs> for myself, you know, and, and you know, I'm very good about privacy for clients. But yeah, something like yes. this, nobody cares. <laughs> Absolutely. So. Well, look, we're gonna be get we're gonna be partying on tonight and today with this episode because this is gonna be a really cool and awesome episode because yes. we have Josh Rado- Radwan, there you go, and 
Radawan like Padawan, and then we have Cassie Polzine with us. Oh, so we're we're excited to have these guys here. So uh, if you haven't been in the uh, you know the um, Awaken Abundance course or in any of the uh, uh, Ascend Elevate classes that we've been doing for spiritual practitioners, then then you haven't run into them yet. But uh, but Josh is actually in my spiritual coach certification program, and he is actually certified as a energy scanner, and he's actually the one who's listed on the website for doing energy scans right now. So if you didn't notice, there are energy scans available on the website for 97 bucks with Josh, and he rocks, guys. He's really good, or else I would not have put him up there because I'm a picky-ass bitch, and you know it. So... Uh, so, That's a true you know, statement. Josh is up there and he, he does that. And uh, he's also getting certified to teach my Welcome to the Woo program. And uh, so he has been on his spiritual journey since 2017 when he had a rude awakening uh, that he will talk about, I'm sure, uh, and uh, really just changed his whole freaking life. And uh, so he's going to tell us some of his story as we talk about the addictions and spiritual awakening uh, topic today. Uh, and Cassie, his lovely fiance, um, is uh, she has been doing this work for over 20 years and she's studied like so much stuff. This massive world of spirituality and metaphysics and the whole she shebang. Right. Um, and so she's got a huge amount of stuff in her toolbox. And uh, so the two of them together are going to have this conversation with us that I'm super excited to have because it's something that, that I don't see a lot of people talk about and I think needs to be talked about more. And in fact, I think it, it is something that is missing from both the spiritual world and from the 12-step uh, world. I think that, that there is a need to cross-pollinate those two um, because they each inform the other, right? So I'm super excited. Welcome, guys. You know, give us a little bit about your story and about how you see the the spiritual awakening and addiction side go together yeah so you know it's uh i'm just i'm really grateful to be here uh it's always just a pleasure being around you and now jules keep putting like i said earlier putting the uh the the face to the voice um it's it's, it's really good to be here so it, it, like you said 2017 a rude awakening that's interesting i didn't ever think of it like that but it was a rude spiritual awakening um i was a uh, you know, I, I was floating through life for a long, long, long time. Uh, I grew up in Wisconsin, come from family of drinkers. You know, it, it's Wisconsin. We we are the heaviest drinking state in the world. I'm pretty sure the people of Ireland settled Wisconsin or vice versa. I'm really not sure how that works exactly. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I traveled around quite a bit in my youth and worked with construction crews, and I just really fell into the pattern, you know, the, the pattern of heavy drinking, drug use, and I didn't have any connection to my spirit at all. You know, like I grew up, you know, and being sensitive to energy from a very early age, you know, being in churches, it, it just didn't feel right to me. Like I didn't, I didn't fit in, I didn't fit in with the mold. So once I got old enough, I just, I didn't continue to do any work on my spirit for a long time. And that's really what the addiction piece was for me. It was a, a spirit sickness. It was something I was trying to use to fill that hole. I just didn't know that. You know, I, I often, you know, chastised people in organized religion for phoning in their experience by, um, you know, just listening to the preacher talk. But the truth is, I listened to George Carlin, resonated with what he says. I was like, I'm good for this life. I'm just going to, you know, tear some shit up and get moving on. So, oh, in, in 27... <laughs> He's one of my favorites. Oh, mine too. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in, in 2017, you know, after years of heavy, heavy stimulant use, uh, everything started, there was too many cracks in the foundation and I became an open channel for a lot of, a lot of dark energy coming through. And, you know, most people talk about their spiritual awake process um, as, you know, have a connection to the divine experiencing oneness. I didn't experience that at all. I saw demons I was getting fed on. I was, you know, I, I just didn't know what was going on because every construct my mind had ever built was now shattered. And I had nothing. I had done zero inner or personal work the entirety of my life. And it was like I was facing all of my inner demons with the outer demons. And uh, it was it was brutal. You know, no, no other word for it. It was just a very brutal awakening. 
and I, I ended up going to, to prison for a couple of years in in into 2020. And I'd like to tell you the the great hero's journey. Like I got out and all was well in the world, but I went right back to doing the same shit. I started doing inner work in, in jail. And, uh, you know, it was three words that actually started me deeper into the path. And it was, you know, a letter my, my aunt sent me while I was in there. And the three words were God is love. And I finally had found a God that I could get behind. You know, there's just the simple fact that God is love. And that never really... It, you know, any other teachings I've had, and they were very limited at the time, mostly to, you know, fear-based, you know, denominations in which, you know, I, I went to. But, you know, there was those three words that made me start to open up, start to open up my heart, start to open up my mind to something greater. You know, like I knew things, there were more things in the world now, but I was like, I, I come out of it. And I didn't know, is that psychosis or spiritual awakening? You know, like, you know, like every doctor, you know, they diagnosed me with schizophrenia. They put me on a litany of medications. And when I would tell them what I was experiencing, they just, you know, said that schizophrenia. But I knew in my being the whole time that what I experienced was very real. But they didn't see it that way. And, you know, like I, I do believe that there are cases where medication is necessary, but I don't think my particular one was one. Um, so in, in 2020, you know, I, I got out and I was, I had relapsed, you know, three days outside of prison. I was in a halfway house, relapsed right back to doing the same exact thing. And, uh, the, the, it, the, it got worse, you know, like these dark nights of the soul come and it just got worse. And I'm just like warrioring through this shit. It's like a Phoenix being returned to the fire with a, amnesia of the lesson that just learned over and over and over and over and over again and uh it just i i couldn't stop i i i, I tried everything and that was the that was the hardest part about it this time is i had, i was trying and i just could not put it together and uh that's when metatron showed up and like i said i was still very much you know and to, to find an angel come through after you know you know, really being a sacrilegious prick most of my my life, <laughs> you know, to have Metatron come through and in the in the form of sacred geometry and Metatron's cube. And, you know, from there, Michael, you know, the Archangel Michael started showing up and then Archangel Raphael. And I was still, you know, going through it, but I was putting longer pieces of sobriety together. And, uh, you know, it, it was good. It was good. It was good to get to the other side of it. But I was still like, what do I do? You know, like I have all these things I've experienced and I have no door to knock on. So at, during that time, at the same time, shamanism kept coming up, you know, like it just, the message of shamanism kept coming up and it, it led me to one of Kelly's podcasts. So I, I opened it up, I listened to it and I, you know, had the courage to call her. And, uh, you know, we had a good talk that day. You know, I talked for about a half hour and like any great mystery school, at the end of the call, she denied me entry into the program <laughs> because I because I was unsafe for it. I was still, you know, cycling through active addiction. And I have to say, this is the first person in the spiritual community that wasn't willing to take my money right away. So, and she gave me with some really good things to work on. And I came back five months later, knocked on that door again, and, and she let me in. And now we've been working together for about three years. And my life has changed irrevocably. You know, I went from three years ago, literally at this time, being in the absolute fetal position in life, crying out for something to change. And she, you know, it, uh, through the lead inner work that she has uh, provided, it's it's brought me to a place where I'm doing public speakings. I own a metaphysical store. I'm a published author. You know, all, all of these things and, and taking the spiritual code certification. You know, it's just... But that, but it was the addiction that led to the awakening. You know, it it was, I don't know. You know, it's just uh, been a, been an interesting ride to say the least. Yeah, yeah. Well, and it was it was, I was floored to be honest when you came back five months later because based on where you were, I expected a year or two, and when you showed up five months later, I was like, mm, I don't know. You're gonna have to prove it to me that you're ready. <laughs> <laughs> and and you totally did and i was so impressed and so you know this has just been you know this is the thing is that we can we can have a, a weakness 
for you know whatever it is that's going on where we're trying to to plug our our pain with whatever this pleasure seeking thing is um but when we set our mind to it and we set our spirit to it and we commit to it despite any fallbacks or you know things that that happen and you know falling down and getting back up again you get there and you know that was the thing looking at you from the outside if i could point at one thing that was super uh that, that was super impactful for you, it was your willingness to stick with it no matter what. And, and that you just committed to the path, right? Um, you committed to the path and you were transparent and willing to ask for help and, and doing the whole thing. And that, you know, when you will commit to the path more than you commit to beating yourself up, that's when you win, right? That's when you actually get somewhere. So, and that's, that's what I've watched you do. It's been amazing to watch. And, and that, that shame piece that you're talking about is the hardest part for addicts, right? Especially addicts trying to get out of that cycle, right? It's like, you know, we want to get out. And every time we relapse, you know, even though our heart wants something so much different, that it, that so that sabotage, so, you know, cycle, it, it just, it, it's a repeat, you know, like I said about the Phoenix, that's what it feels like. It's just like you're burning over and over again and you just can't comprehend. And then you're in this cycle of guilt because you're getting chewed on by things you don't necessarily think of, you know, it's not just you. It's, you know, for me, it was lifetimes of trauma, you know, it wasn't just this life, you know, it's, it's stuff I brought into me and then family line stuff, you know, it's been a, you know, learning about all of it and, and, you know, life, had his fair share of traumas on the way up too. So it's been a fun life. I mean, like I'm excited to be in this seat today. <laughs> I'm excited so, to have you here. Yeah. So, um, so what, what, what made the difference um, where you were able to commit and actually latch onto it this time? You know, truthfully, I, I believe, you know, it was fear that led me to Kelly's doorstep. You know, it was it was absolutely fear. You know, I just I knew I couldn't go on any farther. And I really didn't know how many more of these battles I had left in me. You know, like the, the things that I went through. You know, I don't know what everybody else's experience was, but I, I will tell you the the amount of inner violence and outer violence that I I've experienced, you know, during that path. I just I didn't. I wasn't, I'm not ready to go yet. And I know I've always had this huge heart. And that was like why I think it was harder for me, you know, because I always had this huge heart and, you know, being very empathic, the, the drugs, the alcohol, you know, like it, it really triggered a lot of narcissistic tendencies, but I had this moral compass the whole time that just was at constant odds with the way I was and who I truly am in my nature. And, and eventually yeah. it just, you know, I, I didn't want it anymore. You know, I didn't want it for a long time. I just didn't know how to stop. So, but it's that, that shame and wow. shame and guilt repeat cycle is really, I think the, the crux of the attic, you know, instant gratification, shame and guilt is what keeps us in that loop. And what you have to recognize is that the shame and the guilt is actually a resistance to change. You know, it's the way that we keep ourselves from changing. The more time you spend in judging yourself, the less time you have to actually do anything about it. So the more mm -hmm. you beat yourself up, the more you are stuck in your resistance. So the, the, the path out of resistance in that is to stop beating yourself up and just get back on the path, right? To recognize that the self-abuse is nothing more than resistance that it doesn't Absolutely. serve a purpose we think that if we beat ourselves up hard enough that we'll we'll be better next time that's not true the more you beat yourself up the weaker you become and so it does not make you stronger it actually makes you weaker so the key is to stop beating yourself up and start finding ways to support yourself because mm -hmm. that's how you build your willpower that's how you build your strength your inner inner fortitude is by reinforcing the good things about yourself, reinforcing the things that you can do, not the things that you can't do, right? Yeah, it's what you no, focus absolutely. on. Absolutely. You know, yeah. I, you know, a big part of it is re, like you're saying, reaching out for help, right? You know, like 
you know, I think a lot of addicts, especially, you know, in regards to stimulant use, like cocaine and methamphetamines, you know, there is such a paranoia that comes with the extended use of it over long periods of time that, you know, like during my awakening, I thought the whole fucking world was after me, right? Like I thought the whole world wanted me to burn. And literally that's what it felt like and what was going on inside my mind over and over again. And, you know, so to, to reach out, you know, was like, it, it was the biggest thing I did for myself in this path and to say, I need help. And uh, it's, it's, it's tough, you know, it's tough when the brain has been wired for fear for so long to trust, right? Our, our, you know, the, the traumas we suffer, you know, all the experiences we have in life, you know, the you know, trust, you know, this, it's all about trust and that there trust that there's good people out there that really do care and want to help and uh, that aren't out to get you. And that was, that was the big one for me. And that's why I reached out to Kelly when I did. Yeah. And it, it happens with alcoholism too. My mother was super paranoid and she was an active alcoholic my whole life. So um, you know, the paranoia is, is a function of, of the trauma as well. So, you know, most, most people in these spaces have trauma. So, you know, the trauma is, is the underlying piece and then it gets activated and built onto by the damage done to the brain by the different addictive su substances. Right. So Cassie, we haven't heard from you yet. Why, why don't you talk to us a little bit about that addiction and spiritual awakening? So I wanted to say thank you. This is this is a big step for me. Um, I have not shared my story publicly. He's had a few go arounds at this point. This is my first time really sharing the, my story. So I'm grateful to be able to do it with you. What an honor to be doing it with you. This is really huge. So thank you. <laughs> um, so my experience was a lot different than his. Um, I didn't really have an awakening. I feel that I've been on my spiritual journey literally my whole life. Um, as a child, I, I felt misunderstood. I experienced a lot of things as a child that caused me to question my reality. And, and so I always was the sponge looking for answers. And I find it a blessing at this point in my life that I was raised by a self-proclaimed atheist. Um, she, she didn't believe in anything, which gave me an open canvas to build from. So I didn't have, you know, any of the, the indoctrination or anything that made me afraid of any particular religion or spiritual path because I wasn't raised that way. So I was just con constantly curious. And when I was younger, you know, I remember being outside a lot. I love being outside. I've always been really connected to nature, you know, making the little mud pies and things like that. And I remember talking to spirits or fairies or whatever. I don't really remember particularly what I was speaking to or who I was speaking to. But I remember having these conversations. Um, as I got older and became a teenager, I, I was a troubled child who became a very, very troubled teenager. I was very angry um, and I was I had a lot of unresolved trauma and I really didn't know how to handle my emotions. And I ended up falling into alcoholism when I went to college. When I went to college, very honestly, like it, I didn't want to go to college to go to college. I wanted to go to college to be free. Um, and so my freedom was found in, in drinking and my first drinking experience was at a college party where, you know, they're downing, you know, cans of beer. And this was my first experience. And I thought this was normal, right? My very first time drinking, I blacked out and that was pretty normal for me for, for the following 10 years of my life. Um, this is in the midst of becoming a mother and um, trying to work in the real world and become an adult. And, um, you know, I knew pretty early on in my alcoholism that I had an issue, um, but I didn't know how to deal with it. You know, I went to counseling. I ended up getting in trouble with the government. I spent some time in jail um, and I, I just wasn't really able to get it together um, during this time. I, but I all along the way, I was always questioning things. And I was always deep diving and researching and learning all these different things. I had taken a class when I was in college, um, world religions, and that really opened my mind to all kinds of different things. 
And so when I was in my 20s, my later 20s, I started practicing witchcraft because I was like, this really seems really exciting and I'm really interested. Now, mind you, I'm still drinking very heavily during this time. I do not recommend this for anybody. <laughs> Um, but I started practicing witchcraft, you know, I got into tarot and, um, you know, I started doing spell work and things like this and it got really interesting. Um, I, I don't even know how else to describe it. Like my life just got really interesting. It was very chaotic, very messy, very dark. Um, I got myself into some situations where literally I, I should have died, uh, with my drinking because it was so serious but I'm still here. Um, so I know somebody was was there with me during the times when, you know, I, I was almost I, I almost crashed into a semi one time. You know, it was some pretty scary stuff that I got myself into. So anyways, I got to a point um, four and a half years ago now. I got to a point where I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I knew that the home that I had created for myself and my environment and the people that I was interacting with, like none of it was working for me anymore. And I knew that I needed to change something. So I ended up leaving home and I took a tent and I went out and I started camping. I had about a thousand dollars in my pocket and I just, I went camping. Um, and I started connecting to nature again and I struggled a little bit while I was camping, but I had made the decision. This is the only way I am going to get better as if I start focusing on myself. So my things got really interesting once I left home and I started focusing on myself. About a month after camping, I was blessed with an amazing opportunity to move into my own apartment. This was my first time ever actually being able to build life for myself. Um, when I stepped foot into that apartment, I said, I'm never bringing alcohol into this apartment. And I never brought alcohol into the apartment. And uh, so it's been four and a half years. <laughs> and I, my, my life became so magical. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we need to celebrate that. <laughs> yes. Dude, that's awesome. It is. And it, I would never have it any other way, though, because I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't had those experiences. So I'm grateful for all of it. Um, in any case, like... I thought I had it all figured out. You know, things really started happening for me. Just all these blessings were coming my way. And I really started opening up to, wow, there is more out there. I am being so blessed right now. Um, and I, I was just so amazed by life. I was in this magical space for like a year and a half where I was like, everything's working. I am on the top of the world. And then I realized that it's not just sobriety that <laughs> fixes things. <laughs> so, you know, I spent another year and a half in that time period really unraveling myself and all these things that I had been burying for years drinking um, and just and reading journaling uh, tarot is the thing I tell everybody tarot is the thing that brought me home to myself once I got sober and started using tarot it really did different things for me it helped me to unravel my my patterns and my behaviors and understanding you know how I can change things to to do things differently and create better outcomes for myself. And it really brought me home to myself. So yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey for the last couple of years. It's been even more interesting learning how to interact in the space of being really, I'm really strong in my sobriety now, but now it's like learning all the other pieces of myself along the way that um, create the whole of me. So yeah, it's been a really cool journey. And then this one crossed my path. So it's been a huge, a huge blessing. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Thank you for sharing that story. Um, you know, the, the thing that I'm, I'm, the thing that I've had, I've had long conversations with my husband, who's also, uh, you know, multi years in, in recovery, I think it's 15 now. Um, and um, we've had long conversation about the, the, the challenges with 12 steps and the benefits of 12 step and, you know, the, the importance of those first five steps, you know, getting to the point where you're willing to do the moral inventory, because that's where you're actually willing to actually start your spiritual work. Right. Um, and at the same time, there's a lot about those steps that doesn't leave a lot of room for self-love. And so it can be a quite brutal process sometimes for some people. Um, and, so, you know, this is one of the things that we've, Josh and I have talked about this too, right? Where it's like, okay, so how do you, how do you 
come out of those narcissistic tendencies to like, you know, put yourself above everybody else and nobody else's needs matter. And I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And it doesn't freaking matter and blah, 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 blah. You know, you, you have to break out of that cycle. And so you can't come in with, you know, self-love because self-love doesn't make sense in that state. When you're in that state, you're not about self-love. You're about self appeasement, right? And that's a very different thing. It's like, how do I, how do I get myself to shut up? Right. How do I get my pain to shut up? Right. Yeah. So it's, it's not about self-love. It's about shut the fuck up. Right. And, and, you know, getting my head to stop yelling at me. And so, you know, that there's a lot there that has to be looked at. And so, you know, Josh and I had long conversation when, before, before the spiritual coach certification happened, by the way, guys, Josh is responsible for the spiritual coach certification. He tracked me down and said, I want to teach this. You, you have to let me teach this. And we went through multiple different iterations of that, but months he dogged me and said, you must let me teach this. And so if you're out there thinking you might want to be part of it, you can thank him for that because it would not have existed without him. So, um, but when we started talking about that was one of the things we, we discussed was the possibility of, of taking it into other, other areas into the, perhaps the prison system or into, to the 12 step programs and things like that. So, you know, this is the personal growth is great, but if it doesn't come with transformation, then it doesn't stick, right? If you, if you only change what you do and what you say, but not who you believe yourself to be, then eventually your, your discipline to do those things will break down and you will go back to who you had been. You have to actually change who you believe yourself to be and step into yep. a new version of yourself, a new identity, because that's where change sticks. And that I think, you know, both of you in your stories, I see that. I see the change in the identity, right? It's the, this is not who I want to be. This is who I want to be. And I'm going to live into this beingness, right? And, and that, that is the power step in that moment is to, to just declare that and to commit to it fully. It's the commitment piece, right? We, we, we forget or we go back or it gets hard or me, 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 me. I know how to be this other person. I don't know how to be this new person, you know, I know how to be the old me. And that was comfortable. It's like, yeah, but the comfort was not so comfortable, right? It was my comfort zone, but it fucking sucked, right? It's like, yes, it's my comfort zone, but, the, but it's not comfortable, right? So these are the things that I think are so important. Um, and the beautiful thing, having watched the two of you go through this, um, is that the two of you have come together in this beautifully meshed space, bringing your independent gifts together and making something that's bigger than, than the two of you individually. And, you know, the synergy is, is really quite wonderful to watch. And so you guys are actually doing um, a program of your own called healing through the chakras uh using the energy of the archangels is that right yes so tell we us about it are so excited about this i am very excited about it um i think you should start by telling the story about how it came <clears throat> well i have a wise teacher who happens to be on this very podcast who told me to be wary of burnout so i, I burned myself out in august and i decided okay you know i'm going to take a couple days at the water park with the kids and just just relax. So I'm I'm sitting there in front of Poseidon's Rage, and in the wave pool, watching everybody get blown around. I'm like, not today. I'm just uh, I'm just relaxing, taking some sun. And then this download comes through about you know this class. You know, like the angels want me to write a a, a class and in regards to the chakras and working with the energy of the archangels. And I said, absolutely not. I was like, I'm here because I'm burned out. I can, I'm, I'm functioning at 20% battery and have been for the better part of a month. I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm just not doing it. And, you know, so anyway, I did. <laughs> anyway, we wrote the class. <laughs> so the, you know, three, three weeks go by and I was like, yeah, you know, you guys aren't getting off this one, are you? So I, uh, we, we started writing the class. Um, and uh, Cassie really put a, a lot of work into really putting a beautiful workbook together with this. Um, 
And she's going to let, I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about that part. So it was really funny because at first when this came to him, I really thought this was more his project, right? And I just was kind of, kind of just observing it for what it was. And I started getting messages like he's, he needs more. He needs more because he, he just wanted to channel. Um, and I was like, this is a really big class and people are going to need information and things to read. And they're going to want to know more. Like I know how I would be if I was taking this class and I know what I would want. And then I'm hearing this constant message. I'm like, I'm going to have to help him. right? <laughs> and he was a little resistant at first, but we worked that out. But then this has been such a beautiful process working through this class because as we've been writing it, we're also taking it ourselves. Um, so we've been doing journeys to meet these angels because I personally haven't had a huge experience with the angels. Um, it wasn't until a couple years that I started working with Michael on a on a small amount. But this class has really opened up my perception and, and I love um, shamanic journey and I love that process. So incorporating that with meeting with the angels has been really beneficial for both of us. We've really connected a lot of a lot of key points in that way. Um, so yeah, putting together this class has just been a really beautiful process. I've really enjoyed it. And I've been reading this book, um, by Anna, Anna Dia Judith, I believe is how you pronounce it. Um, it's called Eastern Mind, Western Body, and it is an absolutely phenomenal book. And I've been using this book as kind of a guideline for getting myself more acquainted with the chakras and also to write this workbook and put this together. And it's really been helping to just unlock these deeper understandings of the chakras and how they work and how they interact with each other. And then, you know, understanding how we interact with people and how our chakras being imbalanced cause these things. It's just been, it's been a beautiful journey for me personally, just being able to be a part of writing this class. And I'm so excited to start sharing it with people too. In fact, we've already started a little bit. So it's, it's been really cool. I'm so excited. Well, you know, when you have something like this that comes through you, you know, spirit doesn't give you an option, you know, <laughs> it'll let you hit the pause button, but it doesn't let you go. No, <laughs> it, you know, you can say no, but it, it goes, I'm Henry the eighth. I am Henry the eighth. I am. I am. <laughs> For those of you who know the ghost, who know ghost. right? Yeah. yeah. So, you know, spirit just does that shit. Right. And, and, uh, you know, Josh, you've got, uh, the knowledge from learning all the stuff around the chakras in the energy scan program as well, getting certified to do that. And so there's all of that, which I'm sure, you know, I, I haven't talked to you about it, but I'm sure it's probably informing it, but, um, the, so tell people what they get out of taking the program. What is the end result? What, why do they want to do this? Well, for me personally, when I was in a space where I would have wanted this class, and I still do for the record, but it allows you to get to know yourself deeper. That is the biggest thing that you're taking away from this. You are understanding how your energetic, physical, and spiritual body works, and you're also getting an understanding of how to tap into the ethereal. A lot of us don't know how to do that, especially when we're kind of like fishing around for information everywhere. I know I was for a long time learning how to connect to the ethereal with a direct connection and specifically the archangels which is um to me it's a palatable um expression of the divine right like a lot of people have heard of the archangels that's an interesting concept and it's really accessible to everyone so being able to build that connection to the divine and also being able to build a connection to the self which helps you to just become a better person more understanding of yourself and other people and relationships and community and all of these things Jules and I are laughing because this was part of a topic of conversation that we had in the Wu Yu program recently about the recognizing when you've actually connected into the ethereal and, <laughs> and you know, not like, like being like, I don't know how to get there. It's like, well, you've been there like 15 times, you know, it's like, <laughs> and she's like, I, you know, really? Yeah. You know, and this was yeah, but you know, my conversation, you know, yeah. My analytical brain kicks in and go, step one, mm -hmm. step two, right. step three. No, it's supposed to be the same steps every time. And it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, I'm like, ego, stop it. Right. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Go bake cookies. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, it's like that. So, 
Um, you know, this, I'm, I'm super excited for this program for you guys. I can't wait to see what the results are. I will say, you know, if you're out there going, well, you know, they're just learning it. Why are they teaching it? I, I, let me, let me just explain something to you. When spirit hands you something like this, they hand it to you and you have to go through it first. That's how it happens. When Kathy was running Lumen's Gate, the Lumen's Gate crew, and, and this happens when we do our transformational events as well. When we create an event, we create it having never done it before, but we we download it and, and structure it. And, you know, there's there's pieces and parts. But when you are doing that, then spirit goes, OK, great, we're going to do this. Great. You first. And you're you're put through that, whether you're actually walking through the ritual itself, you know, you're not actually watch, walking through the ritual, but you were walking through the ritual, right? <laughs> I mean, the <laughs> spirit gives you different experiences that take you through the ritual that you've just designed for everyone else yeah. so that you have the knowledge and understanding of how it works in order to be able to facilitate it appropriately. So when I hear people talking about stuff like this in this way i'm like oh yeah there you go that's going to be transformative <laughs> i recognize yeah. that process right there i've done that for many years that's exactly how that works right <laughs> and so you know this is this is one of those things that you have to recognize that that when things come through like this this is exactly how they happen and you know your life can get turned upside down and backwards and forwards and get a little wonky and weird in ways that you didn't expect and then you go oh that's what this is about okay i know how to do this because i'm writing the program go fix that <laughs> right <laughs> Right, because you got to have an understanding of what the experience that other people are going to have is going to be like, and so, you know, oftentimes our experience is a lot more intense than our students' experiences. Our students have much smoother experiences than we do. I've um, I've been they're... feeling that with this. I've been feeling like that is exactly the case. So it's it's funny because it's just been like for me, like a process of just surrendering and stepping into the flow. And it's interesting because we're on this riverside recording thing and we're actually sitting right next to a river where we're recording at. So like, it's just so, so relevant. <laughs> Gotta love it when it lines up. So. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. And well, so we're going to include the link in the show notes, but go ahead and tell people where they can find the link for your program. Um, do you, do you have a quick link for them or are we just going to put it in the show notes? I like... do not believe I currently have that. Okay. No, we'll That's fine. We will just put it okay. in the show notes. And, and if you guys can't, uh, if you guys can't, you don't see show notes on your podcast player and you want to know more about the program, you can reach out to uh, Joshua at kellysparta.com. Um, and then he will give you all the details that you need on that. OK, and to be clear, this is not a program I'm running. This is a program they're running. Mm -mm. So this is not part of the, the Kelly Sparta space, the, the power, the sacred power and purpose mystery school. It is not part of that. But, uh, you know, I I know these two and I know that they're going to be great at what they do. So I'm I'm excited to see how it goes. Mm -hmm. So, OK, so with that said, uh, the two of you mm -hmm. are in the the uh, Spirit Sherpa Facebook group, right? If you're not, you should be, right? Okay. <laughs> Cassie's looking at me going, uh, I don't know. Josh is like, of course I am. Yes. So they, if they aren't now, they will be by the, the time we finish this episode and <laughs> before you hear it. Um, so that's another place that you can find them is in the Spirit Sherpa Facebook group. And so it's Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta uh, in Facebook. And you guys are welcome to come and join it. Most of the, the people that we have on as guests are in that group. And so it's a great way to reach out and get more information. Uh, it's also a great way to connect with me and ask questions. I do answer questions in the group. So, uh, you know, just post what you need to know and, and you know, I'm happy to share it. It's also a great way to say, hey, I want to talk, uh, I want this episode or that episode. You know, can you do do something on this topic or that topic? So, um, so come out and join the Spirit Sherpa by Kelly Sparta Facebook group. And, uh, and don't forget to sign up for the mailing list because that's where you hear about these things because... Their, their program is going to be coming out on the newsletter as well, uh, because I love to support my, my spiritual coach students. So, uh, you know, that's a great way to learn about new things as well. 
So join the mailing list. It's on the homepage at kellysparta.com. Or you can be on the mailing list by downloading the Boundaries for Empaths program. We love that Boundaries for Empaths program. So uh, you can just sign up for that. It's course. free. It's free. <laughs> that's right. All right. I think that's what we've got. Uh, so wrap up for the day would be. What, the, what is the final Kellyism for 2023? Oh, the final Kellyism. Dun, 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 dun. If you really want to change your life, change who you believe yourself to be. There you have it. All right. Y'all be safe out there with partying for New Year's Eve. And that is all that we have time for this week and for this year, folks. <laughs> so <laughs> tune in next time, which will be next year, when <laughs> Kelly has an, another chapter into your guide to energy, magic, and the spirit world. I'm Jules here with Josh and Cassie and Kelly. And you have been listening to Spirit Sherpa. So long, y'all. See you next year. Happy New Year. Bye. Thank you.